player's perspective, you won't really notice this. It is pretty big because this terrain scale is pretty, pretty damn big. But when you're far away, you'll notice the tiling. Um, so you could probably like scale it up a bit, but um, the detail you're gonna lose a lot of on the detail. It's gonna look low res for you. There are different types of uh, ways of fixing this. You could probably um, go to environment and try to hide this this um, detail layer and turn down the detail layer fade distance ratio to 05. If I turn it to 1, you'll see that you can see as a, a longer distance. But in 05, you have to get really close to see it. It all depends on what kind of level or what kind of game you're working on. So I'll just leave it at one for the moment. And it is all about also uh, the texture you're using. If um, you use your own custom texture, you could probably make something a bit better than this and uh, have it look a bit less uh, repetitive uh, than this one. And uh, if you want to avoid having repetitive detail showing up a lot on your textures, You'll have to uh, randomize. You want you must avoid this kind of detail here. That shows the um, the rep the tiling of your texture. So you need to think when you're making a painting a texture a texture or sculpting it in Modbox because you can sculpt your whole texture your texture in uh, Modbox and uh, use uh, make it uh, transform it into diffuse texture with normal maps and a bit occlusion map. Uh, you could like you need to place your details um, smartly. All right. Now this is done. What else we could I could show you uh, about the terrain? Let's see. Um, you could break down. You could add some extra details by adding decals onto your terrain. Um, you need to keep in mind that there are different types of decals. Now with CryEngine 3 there is um, the third de decal mode. You got different modes for the decals. Ones that project on uh, models and uh, terrain at the same time. Or ones that project on terrain only and they probably use less... Uh, um, they're probably less of a performance hit uh, to your overall level. Um, what we could do, we could just bring in a decal just to show you how it works. Um, let's see, I need to find this, probably in MISC. Um, there it is. I need to turn on this follow terrain. That way when you, you can see it, it won't be like under the terrain. I'll just click here. I'm going to move it up a bit. That way we can see it. Okay, now right now it's a plan planar projection mode type, uh, which means it's gonna be a simple plane. It won't project onto anything. You'll have to. It's probably the cheapest way of uh, rendering decal. It's perfect for walls or flat surfaces, uh, but in this case, it won't really, uh, it won't work that nicely. Cause if I wanna have it look, uh, it will. Um, how do you say that? How do you say that? It will uh, collide with the terrain, so it'll be clipped by the terrain. Uh, you want to project nicely? You just switch it to projected terrain. This is one of the cheapest way as well to project a decal onto a terrain. So it will project only on terrain. Um, how do decals work? Um, the way they work. Let's see. Let's go to wireframe mode. This is the way they work. They actually duplicate the polygons they're covering. So you need to be careful when using a decal. Um, let's imagine you got a super dense mesh and you project a decal onto it, you'll probably get almost double the poly count that's rendered on your scene. So be careful with a decal. The, the bigger they are, uh, the more of a performance hit they would be in your scene. Okay? Uh, project and static on static static mesh. Let's just see how it looks. This is a different type of projection that doesn't seem to uh, display. I'm not sure how it works for this projection method, but there's probably a documentation about it on crydev.net. 
Now anyways, we're gonna use the projectile terrain method since this one is the projection that fits the most in this case. And uh, we're going to apply material to it. Um, like earlier, uh, if you're planning to do any changes to your materials, it's probably better if you copy the material that you like from this material library at Kim's with Cry uh, Engine SDK and copy it into a custom folder. But we're ju since I'm just showing how it works, you could just uh, we're not gonna do that. We're just gonna go to decals and. Uh, open up the terrain folder and see what we have. We got three decals here, it's not much. Uh, we could just open the dirt on road 16 uh, underscore bright decal and uh, hit in this icon. I send item to selected object and in this case the selected object is my decal and it should assign the material to the decal. Now um, as you can see it is super dark. Uh, we could adjust that by adjusting the uh, diffuse color and it will look a bit better now um, let's say if it's just for screenshot purpose and it's not for gaming you could probably use this projection method to um, turn down the opacity and there you go a crash again but anyways um, you could just go up and it will turn down a bit the opacity and it will look a bit better and it will blend a bit better with your terrain Okay, so in this tutorial I'll show you uh, how you could apply detailed textures uh, onto your terrain, how you could uh, blend them together and make them look a bit consistent, blend them in a way that it will look nice with your base color texture uh, that's applied to your terrain. And I showed you how they plant, um, blend detail maps inside the, the Cry engine. Uh, I mean, this method here uh, you could use this method here in Photoshop as a technique to uh, add some detail to your base color texture as well, you know, just in uh, like in the previous tutorial. I didn't spend too much time in Photoshop. I mean, I could spend like four hours in Photoshop and it does take time to make some convincing textures and especially for color base since the better co the color base, the, the better the overall quality of your terrain. That's how it's gonna work. Um, you could use this texture, this kind of method to add some details to your um, color based texture. But anyways, I showed you how it works how in CryEngine, how they actually blend detail textures. Now um, it's up to you to use this kind of method to uh, paint color detail textures and uh, uh, I'm looking forward to see what you could do, uh, maybe in future projects and um, let me know um, when you comment the videos on YouTube. if you need to know something how it works uh, I'll try I'll probably try to find a solution and uh, I'll probably maybe make a video tutorial for you or I'll just reply to you in a message uh, on YouTube and tell you how it works there you go uh, thank you for watching this tutorial and we'll probably meet up meet again uh, on another video tutorial that will deal about making uh, a model for uh, CryEngine so what we'll be dealing with is actually making a next gen uh, model. Uh, in this case, it's gonna be a rock model uh, where we're going to sculpt, which we're going to sculpt in Mudbox and make a low poly and bake ambient occlusion normal map. And we will be making a diffuse texture for it in Photoshop, then exporting that from Maya into CryEngine with different levels of details and collisions into CryEngine. There you have it. I'll see you later in the, uh, the other video tutorial. Thank you for watching.